Dr. Stephen Brunton, who is the Editor-in-Chief of Clinical Diabetes, is with me now. And I know you really have your finger on the pulse of how the ADA is helping the average person manage their diabetes. Well, I think the ADA is such an important advocacy organization. There's really no other organization that speaks so much for the average patient with diabetes. And there's so much new information, there's such confusion, even as to what diabetes means. So the ADA can translate the research into reality, but also provide resources for the clinician to help their patients. So it's, it's all about improving the outcomes for diabetes, and I think we're all aligned in that, in that position. With so much information out there for patients, what role does the primary care physician play? Well, we're really the final common pathway for management of diabetes. Probably 85 to 90 percent of diabetes is managed in the, in the primary care setting. So it's important for us to stay on top of what the new developments are, as well as using resources to help our patients to optimize their care. So it's a critical role. Certainly we need to coordinate care with the other specialists, but part of the, the real philosophy of primary care, particularly family practice, is, is really the four C's. It's first contact care, uh, it's continuing care, uh, it's comprehensiveness of care, and it's coordination of care. And it's that coordination aspect, working with the other specialists, that's also very important. How have the new technologies really improved things for you as a physician trying to help your patients and for patients trying to manage their diabetes? Well, when I started managing diabetes, you know, really all we had to manage diabetes was metformin and leeches. So we've certainly come a long way in that process. So I think the technology is helping to monitor blood glucose, particularly when we can understand keeping the blood glucose in range. So some of the, the uh, average glucose profiles give us a chance to understand that one person's A1C is not the other person's A1C, that there's variations and that can have an impact in terms of the outcomes for diabetes. So even just the monitoring aspects, certainly with regards to more intensive therapy with the CGM's improvement in, in uh, uh, the use of pumps and the coordination of the two is going to help our type 1 patients in particular. So it, it's a very exciting time to be managing diabetes with this new technology. And I think you know, coming in the future, uh, when these are even more integrated, it, it's going to be, I think, offer a better prognosis for most of our patients. And with the changing algorithms, there's a learning curve both for patients and physicians as well, but certainly the potential for very positive outcomes. Well, I, I think where we've come now is this idea of individualizing the approach. So we have a lot more therapies, uh, and it can be confusion as to where they all fit. And sometimes we may have better drugs, but we don't have access to, to them because of formulary changes. But recognizing that there's a, a, a more logical approach continue considering where the patient fits into that whole treatment algorithm is critical. And so I think we have the opportunity to improve the outcomes because we have both better therapies and better understanding of the pathophysiology of the disease. When you talk about that opportunity, you have been in this field for many years. You've hey, seen hey, lots of careful. changes. You say I'm very old. The... No, no, okay. no. Experience. Oh, good. You have a lot of experience. And so you can talk about where we've come, but also the future. What is your outlook for the future? Well, I, I think you know, there's so much attention on diabetes. It certainly is now the, the kind of, there's a tsunami, if you will. And I think people are looking at sort of pre-diabetes very much and how we might try and stem the development of diabetes. But also, I think we have another pandemic that's starting with NASH. And so treating those diseases and using therapies that may prevent the progression to diabetes, I think, is a critical approach. Dr. Brunton, thank you so much. Thank you.